underneath. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone back to our first day of the new 2013-2014 Dharma School term. Every September I look forward to starting the new Dharma School term and today, today actually marks the beginning of Patty and I, our 31st Dharma School term with the Sacramento Med Scene. Uh, our Dharma School takes a summer break every June, but our bed swing always maintains a full slate of summer activities. And through the summer, until the bazaar weekend, every Sunday, we have a Sangha service with about 40 to 70 folks coming. With interesting Q&Rs following. And, uh, you know, through the summer, we have the bazaar and the Oong and the youth retreats and advanced training. So many activities going on, but one thing I do miss is seeing the hundreds of Dharma school children we have filling our window and crying in the balcony. <laughs> so it is really good to see all of you this morning once again as we begin this new Dharma school term. As most of you may have read in our Sangha newsletter, Sensei Koichi Mizushima has come on board replacing Reverend Patty as our new visionary programs developer. So I'd like to welcome uh, Sensei Koichi. <laughs> this morning I was hoping to officially introduce the newest full-time minister of our Bensui, but uh, she is taking care of our sister temple in Placer. Uh, having the Shotsky service this morning. Uh, we've been overseeing Placer for over two years now, going into our third year, and, and Reverend Patty has been the primary person uh, taking care of that assignment. Uh, but as you, many of you have, may have read in that same Sangha article, uh, she has officially been on, uh, brought on board and assigned uh, to the bed suite. Hopefully, uh, the bishop will officially assign her from BC. Uh, because uh, although she wasn't really wanting this, I convinced her because I said, uh, think about it, in the 115 year history of the Betsuim, you could be the first female minister assigned to the temple. the Dharma. And I really like 
his explanation, so I, I often quoted this description. So Chogui would say, if the Dharma is truly universal truth, then it should make sense to anyone, any place, any time, in any language, in any culture, right? If something is truly universal, then it should make sense no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what culture, what country, what language. If it doesn't make sense to everyone, then it clearly is not universal truth. After all, isn't that what universal means? Huh? So, the practice of Mompo, the practice of listening to, hearing, and understanding the Dharma is not about believing anything. It's just, just about hearing. I like that, you know, that just hearing what is absolutely, you know, deep in your heart, intuitively, that you know this is true. I think this is how we know when something is true, it rings true to us, because it feels like uh, something cool to drink when you're thirsty, or something warm, like a blanket when you're cold, uh, or food when you're hungry. This is, you know it, you just sense it, you, this is true. And as I mentioned, what I like about Mon Po is that it's just about hearing and understanding. It's not about believing anything. Buddhism is not about believing. It's about understanding. In fact, as any of my Metta Padma students who are here, they should know well, as I taught for so many years, that nothing in Buddhism is taught for believing. Everything is taught for being tested to be questioned. We listen to the Dharma and we ask ourselves, well, is that true? Does it make sense? And if it makes sense, then we should apply it to our lives. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? Makes, if it makes sense, then we should apply it to our lives. If not, we should just put it aside. Huh? Maybe we're not ready to hear it yet. But, you know, the Dharma is for testing and questioning. And the Dharma is everywhere because truth is universal. It cannot help but be everywhere. Truth is not the property of one group or one religion. As we often hear in Buddhism, if we open our eyes, if we open our Dharma eyes, we will find that the whole world, the whole world is constantly teaching us the Dharma. And it's true. Let me try to give you an example. My uh, friend Ruby Nishimi often sends me emails with wonderful Dharma messages. And over the summer, there was one that she sent me that especially made me smile. It made me smile and think again about what is really true, and what is really important in living my life. Some of you may have heard or read this story. Uh, it's about uh, a teacher in a third or fourth grade class and she was talking to her students about the seven wonders of the ancient world you know the pyramids the hanging gardens of babylon the colossus of Rhodes. Uh, these are all a part of the original seven and of the original seven wonders of the ancient world only the pyramids exist today so the teacher asked the students to write down what they would consider to be the seven wonders of the world today. What would the students consider to be the seven wonders of the world today? Most of the class quickly completed their new list of things that could easily be considered amazing and wonderful. Their new list cons consisted of places included like the Taj Mahal, the Panama Canal, the Grand Canyon, the Empire State Building, the Great Wall of China. Uh, it seems that in this class, one child was thoughtfully working on their list, unable to complete it to their satisfaction. And when the teacher inquired if the child was having difficulty with the assignment, the student said, there are so many wonderful things that I don't know what would make my top seven list. So the teacher asked, why don't you share with me what you have to be the seven wonders of the world? And the student's list was very simple. 
It was this, to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to feel, to laugh, and to love. Huh? Not a bad list of wonderful and amazing things, don't you think? To see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to feel, to laugh, and to love. And just to live, isn't this a great wonder? In the beginning of the three treasures that was uh, read this morning, we always hear, fortunate is it to be born into human life. Fortunate is it to be born into human life. To be here, right here, right now, able to see, able to hear, able to touch and taste and feel and laugh and love and be loved. How wonderful just to be alive. Rare, wonderful, and fortunate to be born into human life. Are we lucky or what? And this is all about awareness and caring, wisdom and compassion. The three, the three treasures next adds how rare and wonderful it is to encounter a teaching as clear and meaningful and as reasonable as the Dharma. Yet here it is, but I'll save that for the whole rest of the term. For now, I would say that this, what this child shared as seven wonders of, the, of their world is Dharma. What this child felt to be amazing and wonderful is universally true. It is the Dharma. Buddhism is that simple. The Dharma is that simple. And when our Dharma eyes open, we see things as they are. And we realize that we have so very much to be grateful for in our lives, just as it is. Just as our lives are right this moment, we have so much to be grateful for. Well, we have a whole Dharma school term ahead of us, and I look forward to every opportunity, opportunity for all of us to look into the mirror of the Dharma and to reflect and remember again on what is really and truly of value in living our lives each and every day. So again, I'd like to welcome all of you back to our new Dharma School term. In closing, please join me in Gosh. Buddhism is simple. The Dharma is simple. And when our Dharma eyes open, we see things just as they are. And we realize that we have so very much to be grateful for in our lives just as it is. How amazing to be able to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to feel, to laugh, to love, and to be loved, and just to live this rare and wonderful human life. Namo Aminamas.